awaking in the middle of a prodigiously tough snore, and sitting up abruptly. Seto had no need to be told the hour was again approaching the stroke of one. His clock did that for him, and he felt as if he'd woken in the nick of time to meet the second spirit. The thought of not knowing which curtain would be drawn aside next made him uneasy, so he slipped on his dressing gown once more, and he opened every single one and kept a vigilant lookout, not caring to be taken by surprise. A million possibilities of what the spectre may be crossed Seto's mind. He was so busy preparing for anything that he never thought to prepare for nothing. So, when the hour ticked over and nothing happened, Seto was taken with the suspense of it all. Perhaps he should have dismissed the whole occasion as a wacky, wacky dream and drifted again into sleep, but his nerves wouldn't allow it. Time continued to pass. Five minutes, ten minutes, a quarter of an hour and more. He sat on his bed all the while, until the hour finally came. At first, Seto couldn't fathom the light that slipped into his room under the door. Perhaps Mokuba had walked past and turned the hall light on. No, the incandescent bulb in the fitting was much too dim for that to be the case. Acting as soon as he realized, Seto rushed to the doorway, and upon touching the knob, he heard an unfamiliar voice speak a single word. Enter! Seto opened the door to find that the warm glow came not from the hallway as such, but from the adjacent room, which existed directly across from his own. It was wide open and inviting, despite Seto's certainty that he'd shut it up before. The room itself wasn't as he left it in more ways than just that. Generally, it was kept a rather bland and impersonal guest room. But now it was lively, with red and green strewn about the place. A tree stood in the center of the room, decorated with small jewel monster ornaments, and a blue eyes perched proudly on top. Oh, if Christmas itself looked like anything, it was this room. Pushed up against the table were several chairs, and in the grandest, which was placed appropriately at the head of the table, sat a figure. He had unruly blonde hair and better eyeliner than any woman Seto had ever laid eyes on. Something about his expression was a little off-putting. That grin could only be described as sadistic. Seto wouldn't have been surprised to learn that this spirit had murdered his own father, or committed various forms of assault or something. Come in! And know me better, man! I am the ghost of Christmas present! I thought as much. Whatever you have to teach me, I will learn. Who gives a damn if you do or don't? I get paid for this cameo either way. I accept checks. He's not getting paid. He just doesn't know it yet. Now, touch my rod! Come on, I don't cut all day. Before Seto could remind the spirit that this was a family story, Christmas present held out a thin, gold item to Seto, which he took hold of. At once, the room vanished, the festival of colour being replaced by duller hues, but the people he saw were anything but dull. For now, they stood on a street, invisible as he had been with the last spirit. Businesses were closed, boarded up for the holiday, and yet Seto had never seen the place so alive. Citizens bustled back and forth, stopping to greet one another and bestow their best wishes for the season. I had no idea people were so busy on days like this, where there is nothing to see but one another. Not everything revolves around business. Look, I'd like to let you look around, but there's a formula in these things that I'd prefer to get through sooner rather than later. Next stop, the Shadow Realm. No, <clears throat> Yummy Marek, no. Ugh, fine. The Motel Cities. I'd like to say it was the spirit's own kind, generous, and hearty nature and his sympathy for all poor men that led them straight to Seto's clerk. But considering the spirit's maniacal, psychopathic personality, it was far more likely that they stood before a small but well-maintained home simply because I, the narrator, called for it. Seto peered through the window at the family within. A content-looking brunette woman set the tables and called to her three children, who came running into the room upon hearing their names. Merrick, Ishizu, Odeon, Darlings, come into the dining room. Your father will be home any second. Aren't you going to offer some kind of commentary? Nah. And in through the front door cheerfully stepped Yugimoto himself, with his and Tia's youngest on his back. <laughs> Here we are, little Karibo. Home at last. <laughs> they walked into the home and were greeted with hugs and kisses from the whole family. Then, while the children hurried to claim their seats at the table, 
Yugi took a moment to embrace his wife. You know, Chris must pass wanted my role for this very reason. Seto didn't understand what he meant. And less did he understand the scene unfolding in the tiny house. Such a minuscule feast, but deeply appreciated. I think I understand the point, Spirit. I pay Yugi such a small amount, and yet he is happier here than my riches have ever made me. The Spirit merely shrugged. Mr. Kaiba! Seto, so surprised upon hearing his own name, dared to step closer to the table, only to pass right through the wall and into the room with the family. It's only right that we raise our glasses to Mr. Kaiba, the founder of the feast! <sighs> founder of the feast indeed. If he was here, I would give him a piece of my mind. My dear, the children. Christmas Day. You're right, Yugi. I suppose in the spirit of the day, we must drink to Mr. Kaiba. Even though he is rude, and arrogant, and selfish, and stingy, and unfeeling, and has that ridiculous mole thing going on. My dear. Christmas Day. <sighs> Toast to Mr. Kaiba, who will be very merry and happy this day. Long life to him. The sentiment was weakly echoed by all except Yugi and Karibo, who were much heartier as they all drank unknowingly to their spectator. Seto was bewildered. Yugi was well within his rights to hate him for making his job and his life so hard. And yet, even when he was in, assumingly, no danger of being overheard by his boss, he still extended such warmth and kindness. But there was a dark cloud over this sunny family. Their youngest, the little brown-haired boy with the unusual speaking pattern. Every so often he would turn away from the table and cough. Not the kind of cough that came with a winter's cold, either. He was so pale and frail and sickly looking. Seto had to fear for him. He couldn't rightly say why. The child had that kind of quality about him that made one certain to care, and Seto put it down to the fact that he was, in many ways, just like Mokuba, who was also small and kind of fluffy. Spirit, tell me, will little Karibo live? Heck if I know! <sighs> okay, fine, fine. At the rate you're going, he has about as much of a chance surviving the near future as a side character has of beating the protagonist in any given anime. The rate I'm going? Why is the boy's illness on my shoulder? Have you tried getting health care in his economy? But... What is it? I just... I should like to see my brother right now is all. And I should like to see my perfect behind on the world's throne. So why don't we make like the Pharaoh in the series finale and depart? Leaving you distraught and emotionally scarred, shall we? The spirit's golden rod lit up, as it did before, and the family faded from view. Seto kept his eye on little Karibo, until the very last second. Spirit, why are we here now? Seto asked as another location appeared before them. It was a place he knew. A place he'd actually been in not too long ago. His own house. You said you wanted to see your brother. Christmas present reminded him, gesturing to Mokuba's doorway. Seto peered in through the door, noticing at once how festive the bedroom looked. Sure, Seto had forbade his brother to decorate the rest of the house, but his room was his own, leaving that child free to do as he wished. Apparently what he wished on this day was to make a mess with tinsel and coloured paper, and to invite those kids he called friends over. A gang of nameless brats who looked up to Mokuba like he was some kind of hero. Let's play a game, Mokuba! How about capsule monsters? Nah, that's so season zero. I've got it! Let's play yes and no. I'll go first. <clears throat> All right, I've thought of something. You need to guess what I am. <laughs> Give us a hint! All right, then. Let's see. I'm tall, I have brown hair, a younger sibling, and an extreme god complex. Despite being a jerk, fangirls love me for some reason. I have an arch-rival with ironically crazy hair. My ego is approximately three times the size of this very planet, and I'm a little obsessed with the power of a certain spirit that seems to be wherever I am at all times. Light, Light Yagami. Yagami! No. Then another hint, please. Oh, if I could be a dragon, I would be. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know who you are! Who then? You're Seto Kaiba, aren't you? Yes! I only wish Seto would have joined us today. 
But he said he has work to do. Does... Does he really miss me so much when I work? I think he's missed you for a long time. Anyway, it's time to move on now, come! Seto put his hands onto the spirit's rod, and once more their surroundings faded away. But this time, nothing replaced them. Nothing but darkness and emptiness. Are you all right? My time is nearly up. Are spirits' lives so short? Very. I was only in the anime regularly for less than two seasons. I leave you with the spirit of Christmas yet to come. Go forth and know him better, man! Yes. Is that it now? Am I done? Can I leave? <laughs>